1945. Not a week has yet passed since Adolf Hitler committed suicide in his Führer bunker in Berlin. And unsurprisingly, without its leader, the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany is imminent. However, there are German soldiers who do not think that way and who, faced with the dark prospect of what would happen to them after their surrender, decide to resist until the end. A group of them, of between 100 and 150 troops belonging to the so-called Skull Brigade of the Schutzstaffel, chooses to fight. What they probably never imagined is that they would face a force made up of French, Americans, and their comrades from the Wehrmacht itself. Do you want to know how the strangest battle of World War II unfolded? Why did the French, the Americans, and the Germans fight head-to-head -head against other German soldiers in a 19th century castle? Join us in this new episode, in which we'll go through all the details about the only combat of World War II in which American and German troops fought together against the Nazis. The Battle for Itter Castle. Are you ready? Then, prepare to travel back in time. Before we focus on the battle, let's take a look at the history of the particular setting where this confrontation took place. This castle is located in Itter, a small town in the Austrian state of Tyrol. It was built in 1878 on the remains of a medieval castle and used as a residence until 1938 when Austria was annexed to Nazi Germany as a new province of the Third Reich. Until then, great references of European classical music, such as the Hungarian Franz Liszt and the Russian Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky had been guessed there. However, not even the history of Itter Castle as a medieval fortress could prevent the Nazis from seizing it. On February 7, 1943, under the orders of the Reichsführer of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, the Lieutenant General of that force, Oswald Pohl, acquired the property that, a couple of months later, began to function as a prison, more specifically, as a sub-headquarters of the Dachau concentration camp. But not just any prisoner was destined there, only those French of certain recognition, with some value for the Nazis. To give you an idea, for example, the former Prime Ministers Edouard Daladier and Paul Reynaud were prisoners there. Generals Maurice Gamelin and Maxime Wigan, the award-winning tennis player Jean Borotra, and other notable politicians and activists such as François de la Roque, André-François Ponce, Michel Clemenceau, and even General Charles de Gaulle's sister, Marie Agnes de Gaulle. The maintenance work, however, was carried out by common prisoners from Dachau with the Americans approaching from the west, and with the Russians making their way through the streets of Berlin, it was these prisoners who, taking advantage of the bewilderment and confusion, agreed to fight for their freedom. Thus, on May 3, 1945, they allegedly began their escape attempt by killing the former commander of the Dachau concentration camp, Eduard Weiter, although the causes of his death were never fully clarified. Immediately afterwards, the commander in charge of the castle, surprised by the onslaught of the prisoners, ordered his men to regroup outside the place to recover it by force. After this small victory, the prisoners seized the opportunity to take the weapons that the SS soldiers had abandoned in the retreat and prepared for combat. They knew it was going to be a practically suicidal resistance because the SS soldiers outnumbered them by more than five to one. Faced with this dark prospect, on May 4th, one of the prisoners, a Czech cook named Andreas Krawbit, volunteered to infiltrate enemy lines and go out to get help. Fortunately, he was able to escape on a bicycle unseen and reach the town of Virgil, located about 10 kilometers from Itter. There, he made contact with Major Joseph Gangl, here we meet one of the key figures in the battle for Itter Castle. Gangl was a German Wehrmacht officer, decorated during the war with two iron crosses and a golden cross. But by the time of the battle for Itter Castle, he had recently decided to oppose Hitler's latest orders 
and together with his men, he joined the Austrian resistance in the fight against the brutalities committed by the SS. These included cold-blooded executions of all those identified as deserters who had the will to surrender to the Allies. Gangl and his men immediately agreed to help the prisoners of Itter Castle, but their numbers would not be enough. He knew that the enemy to defeat was a group of more than 100 SS soldiers. Fortunately, on the same day, Gangl's men encountered an American reconnaissance unit in the city of Kufstein, 13 kilometers to the north. Specifically, there were four Sherman tanks belonging to the 23rd Tank Battalion of the 12th Armored Division. The commander, Captain John Lee Jr., did not hesitate for a second to help the resistance. Thus, 14 American soldiers, 10 German soldiers, and a Sherman tank crossed the lines of the SS and were posted to resist the enemy's assault. You wonder, why a single tank if there were four of them? The answer is that the access bridge did not seem to be able to withstand the passage of four armored vehicles. On May 5, 1945, the fierce battle began. By machine gun fire, the single Sherman tank was responsible for preventing the SS from breaking through the castle gates. However, it was quickly destroyed by an 88mm flak anti-aircraft gun. Shortly afterwards, Major Gangle fell victim to a sniper while trying to get former Prime Minister Renault to safety. Faced with this situation, and close to running out of ammunition, the resistance was about to be overwhelmed by the enemy. Once again, they had to seek help. On this occasion, it was the renowned tennis player Jean Borotra who jumped the castle walls and ran through the SS lines in search of the 142nd U.S. Infantry Regiment, which they knew would be in the area. Luck would once again be on the side of the prisoners of Castle Itter. That same day, at 4 p.m., Barotra returned with the U.S. troops, who quickly annihilated the SS soldiers. According to report, around 100 Schufstaffel troops were captured and the French prisoners were evacuated that same night to Paris. Surprisingly, on the resistance side, there was only one casualty, Major Gangle, and four wounded. The Wehrmacht officer would be posthumously honored as an Austrian national hero, and today, one of the streets in the city of Vergel is named after him. Just two days after the battle for Eder Castle, on May 8, 1945, Germany would sign its unconditional surrender, ending the war in Europe. Interestingly, it was in the final days of the conflict that German and American soldiers fought together, for the only time, against Nazism, in what was undoubtedly the strangest battle of the entire Second World War. We have reached the end of this video, and it's time to ask you, what other battle of the Second War catches your attention and why? Leave us your comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you for joining us, and until the next video.